especially if you're working in a partnership, maybe you've got a friend or your husband or someone else you want to work with and build it and you've got a great working relationship and then why not? I say, why not? Like it's so much, I couldn't, I've never worked for anyone else. I've never worked at a Ray Wide or I literally did. I went from doing six years at university to a five day course to get my full license, which is hilarious when you think about it. And, you know, I'm not, I remember doing accounting in senior and I was terrible and I still, you know, I still go, oh my God, that's adjustments you know it's not a debit it's a credit I still muck it up 16 years later because you know but anyway it's fine you work it out and get through it and work out your mistakes and then it just gets easier and easier so yeah there will be a hard slog period probably when you you jack of all trades you got all the hats on but it, the rewards are so great and when you're building someone else's asset that could be yours that you could sell for half a million dollars or more like isn't that amazing that's amazing Welcome to the Property Management Podcast. I'm your host, Kylie Walker, aka That Property Mum. Bear with me as I, like many of us, juggle my multiple hats. And right now I am desperately trying to get back into my podcasting hat. Now, I've got a special guest today who is going to bring a wealth of experience and a unique perspective to the table when it comes to running or starting your own property management business. In this episode, we're going to discuss how property managers can start their own businesses without the hefty setup costs. And this is a game changer for many of you who I know are dreaming of running your own show, but are held back by the financial barriers. And whether that's actual physical financial barriers that you don't have enough money to get started, or whether it's just that mindset and that fear of going out and starting your own business. My guest is Michelle Wild, and she's the principal of the Stella Property Group. Michelle started her business over 16 years ago when she was a lawyer and she was looking to have a business that provided her more lifestyle freedom while she raised her four young boys. And she found that property management and sales were the perfect fit for a flexible working business for women with children that still allowed her to have a sizable income. Her journey is really inspirational and she has developed a business model that allows property managers to have their own business using all the subscriptions under her banner and yet keep 100% of their income. Michelle is really passionate about helping women succeed in their own businesses and her model offers a perfect blend of flexibility and profitability. So whether you're a property manager looking to break free from traditional employment or simply exploring new avenues for growth, This episode is packed with insights you won't want to miss. We'll dive into Michelle's innovative business model, discuss the benefits of starting your own business and explore how to maximize your income while maintaining your flexibility. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, put your earbuds in or however you like to listen to podcasts and let's dive on into this episode. Michelle, thank you so much for joining me on the Property Management Podcast. Before we dive in, can you share with our audience a little bit about yourself and how you got started in the industry? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Carly, for having me. So my property management journey started 16 years ago. I was a lawyer. I spent six years at university trying to be a lawyer, and I was a lawyer for eight years. Actually, if you add on post-grad and all the rest of it, I was eight years as a lawyer and I hated it. I was a banking and finance lawyer. I'd had my first child. Well, actually I actually had two, two, I've got four boys, but I had my first two children and I knew there must be a better way because I was, my husband and I were both lawyers, very stressed out. You know, I don't think lawyers get paid enough for the, the stress and oh, probably property managers don't either, but I do certainly now. So <laughs> I wanted to have my own business where I could work from home, not go to an office where I had to open the doors at, you know, eight o'clock or nine o'clock and shut at five or six. I wanted to have the flexibility around my children. So my children were young then. And, you know, if I had to take them to an appointment, I could. And, you know, if I did an inspection, I'd just have the car right there or whatever I had to do. I, I got au pairs to look after the kids when they were young as well. So that was really helpful. So yeah, I started my business 16 years ago and basically what I tell people is I earn twice as much and I work half the time and I have complete flexibility and control in my life. Like right now, as I mentioned to you before, 
I'm in Cairns for two nights, catching up with some friends. And I'm just, you know, I sit at my computer for an hour and I just answer emails in the morning and the afternoon, do a few things, yeah. but I just love this business. It's, you know, it's, I, and I'm not one for titles. Like, you know, I couldn't care less if I was a lawyer. Like if you're a lawyer, good for you and you love it. But it was like being in a jail cell every day and, you know, writing six, every six minutes, I had to write down which file number and what I was working on. So it was, it was horrible. So yeah, that's, I'm just so grateful. And as is my husband, very grateful that I started the business and was able to work around my children. That is an amazing story. Um, lawyer to property manager. Not many people would probably go down that journey, but I can relate to your story as well because I actually started, I was in media as a sports journalist and I actually started my real estate business for that flexibility around my children. I had four children as well. I've got one girl thrown in there, thank goodness. So I tried, I tried to have a girl, but didn't quite get it. I don't know if I would have coped with four boys. She's my savior at home. Um, she's the only one that pulls some weight and helps me out yeah. these days. But yeah, I, I started it because I wanted that flexibility as well. And my kids always share stories about being sat in um, the car while on their iPads while I was running into a property doing an open home or doing an entry or an exit condition report. And, and as technology has improved, it's, it's even allowed us more flexibility in, in running property management businesses. So that's not our topic, but I guess, that, you know, maybe just share some more about the flexibility that you have and maybe some of the tools and resources that you that you're using now to be, allow you to be able to, you know, go to Cairns for two nights. I mean, I went to, to Europe for four weeks last week. Sorry, not last week. Last year, I went to Europe for four weeks and I could still work and run my businesses from there. So yeah, share a little bit about that. Well, yeah, as you said, I mean, it's so different technology wise. I mean, when, when I started out in in 2009, you know, you had the little digital camera and then you'd have to download all the photos and then upload them to your desktop and then drag them into entry condition reports. And, you know, it would just, it would just take hours. And it's, you know, like if you'd lost them somehow, you'd have to go and do it again. And of course now, I mean, I use RealWorks in Queensland. I don't know what that, what other um, apps there are for for other states, but, you know, an entry condition report now takes me, like a big house will take me 20 to 30 minutes done. Um, I also use a really great app called Blink Plus for my routines. So I do video now mm -hmm. and it's $25 a month, unlimited video with Blink Plus and it's amazing. So I can- It's writing that down. With, yeah. Fantastic. They make the money more with sales videos. You know, you get your own gimbal and you walk through. I don't use a gimbal when I do a routine, but I can do up to a five minute video and I will commentate through. So I don't have that pain of going back to the office and typing in all the things. I'll literally walk up to a stain on the carpet and I'll put the phone down and I'll say, this looks like a coffee stain. I think it's going to come up in the, you know, this, or, or there's a, there's a scratch here or you know, the toilet roll holders loose and I'll show them and open the oven and, and I'll have the commentary all through and I can do a five minute video and the owners absolutely love it because they can pause at any time and look and rewind and look and look. I've just found with the real works entry notices, a lot of them wouldn't even open it and have a look because they're just photos of a wall or a, or a bit of carpet and they don't know necessarily what they're looking at or, you know, and just your one line note is often not great. So I would recommend that bit of technology which I've only just started using in the last six months beautiful uh, thank you it. yeah yep. other than that look I, you know I'm the same I work off the phone in my car that's my that's my office you know I, I, I take my laptop away with me when I'm going away I was in Bali two weeks ago for eight days surfing with my girlfriends like it's just so good and I've got a a lovely lady who has her own business with my company and Danielle, she was able to do some of my opens for me on Saturday because obviously Saturday is the only day we actually have to work. But she did my opens for me and, you know, that's the only put probably real hands-on have to be there day. But otherwise, yeah, technology's, the technology is so much better than it was 16 years ago when I started. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I started around the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and so let's talk about you seem – you. You are very passionate about, you know, women having that freedom as well and helping other property managers, you know, have their own businesses so that they can experience some of the benefits that I guess both you and I have had from having our own businesses. Don't get me wrong, there's still a lot of hard work and a lot of a lot of pain that can go into it as mm -hmm. well. But 
you know, the, the freedom benefits definitely outweigh those those tough and challenging Absolutely. times. So, so talk to me about this, you know, some of the ways that you are helping women in property management start and have run their own businesses. Basically, you know, when I, for, for me to open my doors, it's about $1,500 a month in subscriptions, real estate, domain, and, you know, my, I, I use Eagle software for my website and all my, my CRM and uploading and, you know, there's RP data, real works and so on. So what I offer women, or, you know, men too, but there's obviously it's a female dominated industry is the ability to have their own business in property management. If they're an experienced property manager, they know how to run management. I myself, I, I've run for the last 16 years only between about uh, 60 to 90 properties because I only like to work 20 hours a week. That's what I like. And that is an excellent income for me. As I said, twice what I used to earn as a lawyer. So, you know, I don't want to work like a lot of property managers who manage 250. I don't want to work 60, 70 hours a week. And I do my sales as well on top. So yeah, basically for $330 a month, women can join Stella and use all of that infrastructure and basically get to a point where, you know, maybe they get to a hundred and they think, well, I would like to have my own brand and I'm just going to move everything over to my own brand if they want, or maybe they, maybe having their own rent rolls, not for them, they might build up to a hundred and sell because as you know, it's a fantastic, very saleable asset. You could build it up to a point where you're like, you know, I'm 55, 60 or whatever age you are. And I want to sell and make $500,000 because I don't have any super or much super or whatever. So I, I just think it's such a perfect industry to, you know, build your own business. And if, if you're, if a, someone's a property manager, they know, you know, the ins and outs and all very experienced to get their own clients and keep a hundred percent of their income. So, yeah. so with that structure, if they join Stella, do they have access to like your property me or whatever pro property management software that you use? Well, yeah. so the only thing is they have to be fully licensed and they have to run their own trust account and they can do that. I run my own trust account as in my personal name as trustee for, you know, I have to call it Stella Property Trust. They can run it in their own name or in a corporate or a trust structure, however they want to run it. I For property, I use property tree. And I, I mean, I know there are some property managers out there who don't actually have experience with trust accounting, but it's not that hard. You know, really at the end of the day, it's pretty simple accounting. It takes me, you know, a few minutes every day just to receive my rents and so on. And so, yes, they would need to be fully licensed, insured and have their trust account program because I think if you're having your own, if you're running your own business, you really need to be on top of your own trust account. And, and I mean, I'm probably happy to do a few to get them started and then transfer them over if that's what they want to do. But really, I think starting from that level of fully licensed, fully insured and with their own trust account, and then they just jump on and, you know, they use the CRM, which is amazing. Uh, Eagle, I, I've been to other, you know, over the years, you try the things and I've come back to Eagle because I just think it's so user-friendly. There's I've got over 10,000 contacts in my Base people can use my contacts to market to. I don't mind, you know, yeah. <laughs> whatever they want to do, and or market to their own people through the newsletters and social little apps and things that they can do. I mean, I'm not great on marketing. I've just employed a friend of mine to do some of my socials for the first time ever, and because I've, I've sort of had some social media block, I've tried to learn. But yeah, like so many of us, we all have a lot of us have social media blocks. Mm. That's for sure. But so talk to me then. How how did you grow when you first got started because you've gone from obviously lawyer straight into I'm assuming I'm not sure what the gap was but how did you start and how how do you consistently now keep that, those managements between 60 to 90 because I find you know I think that there's certain places you get to when you're growing you get to 50 it's really hard to get to 100 you get to 100 it's really hard to get to 250 you get to 250 it's really hard to get to 500 so yeah talk to me about you know the stages of your growth and and what you do yeah sure so interestingly my first year in 2009 was a funny year because I was I still worked my corporate lawyer job for three years before I finally made the full jump I was building up my business I had a business partner at the time so I was lucky enough to, when I joined a BNI group, which I'd recommend everyone do because it's, you know, it's small, small business or even startup referral by referral, the best form of business ever. It's not expensive to join. It's like $2,000 a year. 
and you meet once a week for business. But we were lucky enough our first year to meet a flatland developer who was selling house and land packages and he referred to us as the property management business and we got 80 in our first year. And then my business partner at the time was approached to go and join them which she decided to do. So we split our rent role at that time. She decided to go and then I was left with 40 and I just basically went again from there. So my business, honestly, for the last 16 years has been mostly referral. Obviously I knew, let my friends, family, you know, my old, old co-workers know. I, my husband and I had five properties at the time. So obviously I managed those and some were regional too. And i managed those regionally. I wasn't fussed about going there, you know, every I only do my routines every six months. I don't like going in every three anyway. So I go in once a year and have a look, you know, so very easy to do regional stuff as well, which I was managing my own that way. I did get to meet a few developers. So at which I got a lot, actually I did manage huge um, complexes in Gladstone for one developer. And then I went to go on to, um, he sort of gave me uh, management rights for free our deal was uh, so he had 14 units in a building he built so I got all the managements and I've been selling them over the last 10 years as well um, the deal was and I did sign he had a lawyer do up an agreement that said if at any time he came to me he owns those management rights himself and if he wanted to sell them I would literally hand them over within you know seven days or something which of course I was happy to do because I mean that just one contact with that developer I've made like hundreds of thousands of dollars over the last 10 years. So, you know, you, you, you do need to be a people person and be your own BDM in a way, uh, unless you want to learn those skills. You can, there's lots of courses you can do on that. I think, um, red, is it red do a few, oh, well you do that too. That's what you do. Yeah. yeah. That's what you do. You teach people how to, you know, get their own business. So I yes, I have done letter box drops and, and fly, you know, flyers. I've just had 10,000 printed out and got my 13 year old. Out on the streets locally as his school holiday project to earn some money for his ski trip later this year, which he has to pay for. But, you know, yeah. So I guess those things, really networking and 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 that referral business is the best for me. Beautiful. And one of my clients, I managed 19 of her properties around New Farm. So she's an Italian lady. I think she tried out all the agents. I really just do her rent collection only. So she does have a very low management fee but she does all the maintenance and I do the routines but like I said they take me three minutes on a video so you know it's not a big deal and and you know some of her properties their houses in New Farm renting for a thousand dollars a week so when my management fee is five percent including I'm still getting fifty dollars to rent the collect the rent every week and send it to her so yeah no brainer no brainer Um, meet those people I say look I'm not a discount agent and people like me because they deal with me yeah which is why people don't like those big agencies like Ray White because they the churn is so much and they get frustrated with having to you know meet a new property manager every few months you have to then update them and you know they don't answer the phone necessarily or emails because I know I get it they're so swamped with managing you know 200 or so properties it's tricky for them but for me the lifestyle of always being able to pick up the phone like someone rings I pick up the phone I you know they know that I'm available to them so yeah Yeah, I've experienced obviously I'm only an independent agency but I've experienced you know with 500 managements I've experienced the turn of property managers and it is and I'm actually back in the seat at the moment I've got about maybe 150 properties that I'm managing myself Mm -hmm. and it is yeah it's, it's it's hard work and it, it's exhausting. And do you think that that 60 to sort of 90 is a sweet spot for property managers and business owners? If you are anything like me, you think you know your rent roll numbers. Well, I thought I did until I had a rent roll health check and I was quite literally shocked. The money I was leaving on the table was astounding. And this is not something that I'm proud to admit. There were missed management fees, let fees, advertising and lease renewal fees not being charged and properties even without bonds. And all of this was happening despite monthly audits being conducted in my business. So how did I uncover all these gaps in my valuable income? 
Well, I had a rent roll due diligence from my good friend Tazi, aka the Rent Roll Queen and founder of the Tazi Way, a specialist in rent roll due diligence, business valuation and management rights. The Tazi Way is the innovative force driving the real estate industry. With 25 years of business and real estate acumen, they find gaps and risks in your agency to find undiscovered value. If you'd like to book your business in for a rent roll due diligence, head to the link in the show notes and mention That Property Mum for a 10% discount. If you're ready to be a super organised, focused and productive property manager, buckle up because Colmeo is about to revolutionise the way that you work. Colmeo is the driving force behind property management excellence in residential real estate. Now picture this, a comprehensive end-to-end system designed to be the beating heart of your property management tasks, manage your properties, owners and tenants, and handle payments, inspections, and even marketing listings without leaving the platform. Comio is designed to be an all-in-one solution to all your property management needs. And here's the game changer. Colmeo isn't just software. It's been awarded the most innovative prop tech scale up in 2023. Yes, you heard it right. Colmeo has been recognized for their groundbreaking approach to property management software. How good is that? So property managers, whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, dive into the future of property management with Colmeo. You can book in a demo with the team today and go in their weekly draw for a Prezi gift card worth $100. All you need to do is to head to the link colmeo.com forward slash that property mum and colmeo is K-O-L-M-E-O. Yeah, I think it is for me because, you know, I I worked really big hours as a lawyer and I finished that in, I'm just trying to think of how old I was in 2009. I'm 48 now, so 16, oh, well, let's say 13 years ago, really, I went, anyway, I can't remember. I must have been five, maybe. I can't help you. I'm terrible with math. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what, I was mid-30s and I had yep. little kids and I just, you know what, I don't want to work like that. What's life about, you know, life's about enjoying your life. And, you know, I have, I, I got to a point very quickly, probably like you, you get to choose your clients. Cause I've had, when I first started, I took a lot of shitty clients and I love being able to say, I'm sorry, I don't manage your property from today. Where would you like me to drop the keys? And I only fire, I only fire clients when they, I had a client who was so cheap, you know, the roof was leaking, the oven wouldn't work. And they kept mucking me around and saying they were getting their handyman to go and do things and they wouldn't. And it was just terrible. And I had four and I thought early on, I'm like, you know what? I don't need this stress. So I I rang. She'd never pick up my call. I just texted an email. I said, please let me know where I'm dropping your keys today because I no longer manage your property. And that, that is freedom because, you know, as a lawyer, I didn't get that choice either. If I had an asshole client, that's, I just had to suck it up. Suck it up. Yeah, I actually sacked a client last week as well, actually. And, you know, it, and it's a really, it's it's an older property, but it's beautiful and it's really high rent. It's like 700 bucks a week, which out in Ipswich is high rent. Yeah. And loveliest tenants, they're looking after it immaculately. And the owner, the but the hot water is a dribble. Oh. And she will not get the hot water fixed. And these poor tenants, like, you know, and I've, I've, I've even had the owner there at the property just to have a look at it mm. and she, and just won't get any maintenance fixed and won't take responsibility and won't take it. I just, and I just had enough, same as you. I just said, I don't need this. I'm sorry. You know, you've got, here's your 30 day notice, pick up your keys. If you want to pick oh, them up I say sooner. That day. I yeah. Say that day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Today. Well, I, I'm just trying to know, I'm just trying to negotiate for the tenants to get them out of the lease. Yeah because she now wants to sell it. So anyway, but yeah, it, it, and it does take a while to have that confidence to sack people. And even, you know, I've just brought in a new thing in, in with my BDM, who is one of my sons. I've just said to him, mate, don't just take on any property. We, we, we're going to interview clients now to see whether they're a right fit, with whether we're a right fit for each other. We're going to go and check out the properties. We'll go and inspect them. And we are going to interview, sit down with the client and interview them, either if it's over Zoom, and see if we're a right fit, find out their instructions and their wishes around maintenance. And because 
I'm, we're not in a position, we're not desperate for clients anymore. We can pick and choose and the better clients are going to save us way less hassles in the long run. So I've I literally just brought that into my business. So yeah, I'm glad and that you say yeah. that too. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's probably a bit of training too, because if you're coming from a big agency where you're managing, like you can't say that if you're not the boss and, you know, it's not your asset to manage. And so you have to take those shitty clients and unless, you know, you've got a good boss who's like, yeah, we're not doing that. You know, um, I think, to, and, you know, some of the, because I think we were talking before about, you know, different books and training that I do, like Boundary Boss is a great one. You know, you really have to do set up those boundaries. Like, you know, I'll tell you all about how I'm going to help you get the best return for your property and how I manage maintenance and this and that. But you're also, you know, I need to know that you're on the view, you have the view that when there's maintenance, it gets fixed quickly, efficiently. And if it's going to be above what the rent is for the month, then I need to know you've got money for payment and it's not going to be an issue and, 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 you know, all those things. So setting up those boundaries early on, I think is great. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So if somebody is listening to our conversation today thinking, oh my God, this sounds amazing. It's time. I'm ready. I'm ready to do my own thing. What is the best advice that you would give them to, and, you know, maybe some tips on setting up their own business? Well, I guess it depends if they want to set up their own brand or, you know, say like join a model like mine where they can have a very low entry point and just start from zero. Obviously, what advice would I give them? Well, I mean, I guess be ready, be prepared. It is hard slog for the interim until you get to a point like where you're probably replaced your income, whatever that may be. I, I don't even think that's many, you know, like what are property managers earn this, these days, like. 70 to 100 yep yeah around that so look seventy thousand is probably only 15 to 20 properties depending on what your you know if you're in a lower rental area obviously the that will be different to me i mean I'm, most of mine are in new farms so my units are at around 800 a week to houses i've got houses in new farm that are 2000 a week so you know obviously depending on where you're at just i just say go for it Do you know what back yourself i, I mean if you if you're an experienced property manager and you're so tired of working for someone else and you think well I've still got ten years in I can do you know even five years in like why wouldn't you build an asset you know and property managers would know the value of these assets at you know two and a half to three point three three dollars thirty per dollar income like it's it's really huge if you built to a hundred or more you you have a saleable asset of, you know, like half a million or to a million or, or, you know, sky's the limit. That's what I love about this business. And especially if you're working in a partnership, maybe you've got a friend or your husband or, you know, or someone else you want to work with and build it and you've got a great working relationship and, you know, then then why not? I say why not? Like it's so much, I couldn't, I've never worked for anyone else. I've never worked at a Ray Wide or I literally did. I went from doing six years at university to a five-day course to get my full license, which is hilarious when you think about it. And, you know, I'm not, I remember doing accounting in senior and I was terrible and I still, you know, I still go, oh my God, that's adjustments. You know, it's not a debit, it's a credit. I still muck it up 16 years later because, you know, but anyway, it's fine. You work it out and get through it and work out your mistakes and then it just gets easier and easier. So yeah, there will be a hard slog period probably when you you jack of all trades, you got all the hats on. But it, the rewards are so great. And when you're building someone else's asset that could be yours, that you could sell for half a million dollars or more, like, isn't that amazing? That's amazing. Absolutely. I totally agree. I think that's most, amazing most, advice. Yeah. Most businesses, say if you have a retail shop you're, or a cafe, you're selling it just for stocking trade. You have a lease. And for, I find I work from home. I mean, I would nev I've never had a commercial office. My office is my car and my phone. And my office at home, I, w I would never go and spend what, however many thousands a week on a big operation. I mean, I know that's why those big agencies, they are under money pressure because when they're paying staff and, you know, all the things with an office and rent or whatever. It, it, there's not much profit left at the end of the day. If you take out all of that, there's not, not much them. profit. I can tell you that yeah. from experience. Yep. Yeah, exactly. But when you're running your own and you're keeping it really trim and you've got your marketing budget and you think, okay, well, I will join, a, I'm going to spend this $2,000 this year on, I'm going to join a BNI and get some clients and work out at the end of the year if that, has that worked for you? If not, we'll find something else. Join another 
I don't know, join Rotary or join, you know, the Chamber of Commerce or, you know, women's group. There's lots of, you know, chicks in business or business chicks or whatever. There's tons of networking opportunities and, you know, I'm quite social. I love meeting new people and, and getting out there. And I mean, I, I picked up a client <laughs> this year. I go to Living Valley Health Retreat every January because obviously the first week of January, there's nothing happening in real estate. I do not have leases expiring in December or January. Yep. And the first week of January, I go to Living Valley in Kinkin and I detox and I do my thing and I reset my brain. And I met a client there and I got a commercial listing, which I just leased for her. And I got two um, apartments in Spring Hill, which I've been renting for her and now she wants to sell. So, you know, just meet people and tell them what you do. If, they, if, you, if you're, if you know, a friendly, if they know, like, and trust you, they're going to give you their business. So it's not difficult, I think, to get business. Absolutely. Great advice there. Now, I love personal development. Can you share with our audience a tool, resource, podcast, book, something that will help them? Well, probably before Boundary Boss is a good yep. one because I think women, I was just saying this to my husband before, you know, women can take on a lot of stress and responsibility where things aren't their responsibility because I don't know, that's what we do as women. We're we do, yep. emotional and we try and please everyone and, you know, they would know. And I think this is why you get the old grumpy property managers because they're so sick and tired that the owner will ring them out, the tenant will ring them out, and then their boss is like, oh, you how many ma- you've lost this management and you've lost, you know, whatever it is. It's, you know, I think we can be take on too much stress. And for me, setting firm boundaries and going, well, that's not my responsibility. You know, when tenants say things like, oh, you need to fix this, well, I'm trying to think of an example. And you're like, well... Or owners, you know, I had an owner actually, a tenant had cracked an asbestos wall and she wanted the tenant to replace the whole wall. And I said, no, that's dangerous. And they've bogged the hole and repainted it. And I tell you, if I go to QCAT, QCAT's going to say that's enough, but I, there's no way I'm going to ask that tenant to replace an asbestos wall because it's got a little crack in it. That's your responsibility. So, you know, it's all those things. That's not my stress. That's her problem. And she either deals with it or not. So yeah. yeah, just things like that. I think women can take on too much stress. I don't want to have a heart attack at 50. <laughs> I don't get stressed. I'm like, yep, firm but fair is my philosophy. Yep. Always firm, always fair with tenants, owners and whoever. So yeah. I well, do I feel, sorry, you but I can't think of anything specific. Well, I think that you've got a lot of self-care there as well, obviously going away, oh, yes. take like having yeah. a, that reset every year. And I think that's probably something we people talk about it and spruik it and, you know, self-care, self-care. But how many of – and I, I get in I, – as I'm busy working, I forget to do my self-care things. And then I get snappy and cranky and, you know, I find my I, – I feel like I, I've had a heart condition from stress. So I know my body now very well that I'm like, right, I need to – and just before this podcast, which is why I wasn't very organized when I jumped on today was because I had to go and take my dogs for a walk and just clear my head. I had, I'd been up yeah. working since five o'clock, but oh my God. I just had to go and clear my head and wow. just reset. I'd had a couple of little things that had really grinded my gears and then, you know, walked the dogs, come back and I felt so much more relaxed and what those big issues that I had built up and was I was feeling in my body it was was not feeling them anymore i've you know found the solutions that i needed with a bit of clarity mm-hmm. but i think it's our responsibility to take care of ourselves we can't wait for our husbands our friends anybody else to take care of us that's on us and it's on us to not take on that you know people pleasing and that keep trying to keep everybody happy and I, I have this conversation all the time with property managers that have come and gone through my businesses and you know, the, and I actually have a, 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 I give all of my team now one mental health day or self-care day a month. Just you guys take it whenever you want. It's, you know, you get paid for it. You go do, you know, if you need to sort out your finances, you need to get your tax done, you need to get your nails done, whatever, you go do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, sometimes women feel a bit guilty even. Like I'll say, I've said to people, friends of mine or whoever, just go and get a massage once a week or acupuncture now I'm I'm pretty tight sometimes with my money I always have four children and two in expensive private schools but I go to Endeavor College or Q Academy it's $35 for an hour massage everyone can afford that 
I go to Endeavor College for acupuncture. I do this every week. Every week I'm there for a massage and acupuncture for an hour and it's $35. Yes, they're students, but they're still amazing. And I just, when I get there and I've, I've had a massage, I just feel amazing. Like I've like, yes, yeah, someone's actually filled my cup a bit or I've filled my cup by going to do this and it's not expensive. I haven't spent $130 for a massage. I've spent $35. So every yeah. woman should be doing that and there are ways to find you know find the college where the students are if it's if you don't have 130 dollars a week to spend on a massage you know like i got i go hours a week because i need it for myself yeah absolutely and i think we need it more and more the more we spend in front of computers i i constantly in between my i i get a massage every week as well but in between my shoulder blades and it's from sitting hunched yeah. up typing so much yeah. and that that's one spot I'm always trying anyway but yes I, I love that I love that and that's some great sharing with you know with the audience about you know their self-care and personal development and I've absolutely loved having a chat with you and connecting with you how can our audience connect with you further or become part of your stellar business I guess it is a business so yeah well I mean you can just give me a call pop me in email or a text, Google my name, Michelle Wild. I have a look at my website. It's Stella, S-T-E-L-L-A.com.au. I managed to get that really good domain without paying a fortune for it when it dropped years ago. I used to have Stella Property, which I still have, .com.au, but I got Stella. Jump on, have a look. There's a little tab saying join us. You can have a look and see what's included. Have a chat with me. I mean, some people are very nervous. Danielle, when she joined me, we, we chatted and had lunch and coffees for about four months because she came out of a very stressful office and she wanted to start her own business, but she didn't want to make a mistake. And, you know, you don't want to be chopping and changing. So she had to know that she was making the right decision. And I'm happy. We chatted for four months and I said, look, you can talk to anyone who knows me. I'm not going to, I don't, you know, I'm an honest, open book. Uh, you run your business if you get to a point where you want to you know do your own brand do it I'm more than happy I I'm just happy to be part of your success so you know you can call Danielle she runs her own business as well I've had other ladies who've just retired and you know transitioned out and you know I had um a lady who was I think she's in her 70s working with me but she finally just said you know what I'm done she was just managing a few little things for old clients she had a Ray White office and didn't want to you know do that again so reach out, give me a call, pop me an email or a text. I love chatting. I love chatting property. I love helping women be successful in business. So, yeah. I was about to say, I bet you like to have a chat with everybody that reaches out. (laughs) That's awesome. I'll share all the links in the show notes as well. Michelle, thank you so much for joining me. Pleasure. Thank you. Can I ask you a quick favor before you leave this episode? Now, we all know how important reviews are for businesses these days, and mine is no different. If you could spare just a minute to follow, rate, and review this podcast, it would mean a lot to me. In fact, what would get me super excited is if you share this podcast with someone in the industry who you think might need to hear some of the episodes right now. And if you'd like to find out more about working with me or any of the products I have to help you start, grow or scale your property management business, head to my website, thatpropertymum.com.au or check out the links in the show notes.